Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and I kind of hope you'll support me on this one. I would like a little bit more of a serious episode for a change. In this week we're going to talk about something that is particularly important to a lot of people in the world and that's hearing aids. Hearing loss is something that affects a lot of people around the world and there's someone very close to me in my life that also suffers quite badly from it and they are part of the inspiration for why I wanted to make this as a teardown video. Um, the other person that really sort of made me think about this was actually Adam Savage who you may know from Tested on YouTube or uh, formerly the Mythbuster and he's made several videos addressing his personal experience with hearing loss and how hearing aids have revolutionized his life and I'd encourage everybody to go find those videos and look it up because he speaks so well about the subject and it makes you really think about what a piece of technology can mean in someone's life. So for the sake of this video I have sourced a let's call it a vintage hearing aid and uh, just for a bit of comparison we've also got a much more modern hearing aid just to compare it to. So we'll start with the, the older hearing aid and we'll come back to the modern ones later when, let's face it, I'm probably going to need to get the microscope out. So this particular hearing aid, I have to admit, I actually don't know how old it is. I'm hoping we're going to find some markers, but the, the style of it, I feel like that's late 70s, maybe early 80s. I don't know, I could be way off the mark. Hopefully we're going to find some indication and it comes with its own little leather carry case. I'm sure a lot of people are probably seeing this thinking, that's huge. This is described as a wearable hearing aid. There's a few different styles depending on what you do with them, but this is the most common throughout history style of hearing aid. And I think you can still get them in this form factor today. And it makes a lot of sense because the batteries that go into uh, the newer hearing aids are these, and my goodness, they're tiny, expensive, and you get through a lot of them. So let's get into this one, let's see where it takes us. Obviously, battery compartment on the bottom. Ooh, a dummy battery. So presumably there are options on how you power this. One being a 1.5 volt cell, maybe there was a three volt rechargeable cell that went in if you used this. I don't know. Trouble is I don't even know what model this is, so I can't actually get a hold of the uh, documentation to find out. Beautiful twisted pair. So you can probably work out already that there's no microphone on this earpiece. The microphone has to come from here. Just got a little volume knob or mode knob. It says one, two, three in it. And then you've got an analog zero to five meter. So I'm gonna call those probably modes and that's the volume. So this earpiece is just going to be stuck on there. You see it's got a pre-molded metal ring that snaps onto the speaker part. Uh, removable wire, that's a nice touch. So if that becomes damaged or defective, you can replace that plug and play. Just while I'm working out how to get inside this, it's worth just talking a little bit about the history of hearing aids because this blew my mind. I mean, it kind of makes sense that mechanical hearing assistance has gone back a long, long way. You think of uh, like a hearing trumpet or something, you know, just a, a big horn that then feeds sound into your ear a little bit more clearly. You know, you can imagine that going back three, four hundred years. The first electrical or electronic, I'm going to call it electronic, hearing aid came from 1898. That's right. Queen Victoria was still sat on the throne in the UK. 1898, which sounds ridiculous, but when you think about it, the first hearing aids used a carbon transmitter, which was basically technology poached out of telephones. And telephones have been around since the 1860s. So yeah, it makes sense that the first hearing aid was called the Acurophone, I think is how it's pronounced, A-K-O-U-P-H-O-N-E. And then in the 1920s, of course, the first Vactua phone or vacuum valve phone hearing aid was patented. And then in 1948, just post Second World War, you got the first transistorized hearing aids. Of course, later you started to get some DSP and uh, some sound processing. 
but somewhere in the middle of that we found this device and this is really simple as far as electronics go uh, okay so I haven't spotted on this badge on the front there's a tiny little slot which would have been facing outwards from your belt or whatever you were wearing this on and that's the microphone so this is the microphone and this is your amplifier which is all passives in this wonderful blob of epoxy resin and all just wired up in ceramic coated wires what are these terminals for at the bottom because power definitely comes from the two battery contacts at the top so what are these for it's weird that they look like they're under sealing wax or something ah a little capacitor a little two microfarad capacitor I guess they didn't want to embed that in the epoxy because of the electrolyte and the possibility of leaking. So it's obviously a component prone to failure. So this, between the two very... I'm going to assume that's very, very perished sponge as opposed to like a phenolic foam, which is what it's behaving like at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's definitely... stuck on slightly rubberized foam in the middle yeah not the best potting i've ever seen on components but clearly it was enough just to hold them all together the microphone battery terminals mode selector another battery terminal volume wheel that looks like it's pressed riveted closed and that's all there was in this very old hearing aid and that's something which let's face it most people could probably knock up in an afternoon with some very basic electronics knowledge and a few passive components that would be very easy and very cheap to reproduce and replicate don't get me wrong i'm not suggesting you do this is a medical device that you're putting very close to somebody's brain with electronics in it i'm not suggesting everybody goes home and starts making their own hearing aids for their loved ones do not want that responsibility for making somebody's hearing worse but electronically this is a simple circuit i mean i've built projects with audio amplification in there as well it wouldn't be too challenging to take that and do this with it but then we get to miniaturization that entire amplification circuit is about the size of the entirety of a modern hearing aid modern hearing aids are incredible so the hearing aid itself is about 30 millimeters long and you can see on the back of it there is a button and that is how you can change modes turn it on and off yep and on the inside we have the battery door and from there you go along this tiny little wire all the way to the microphone which basically goes in your ear so what i don't know is how this comes apart and whether i have to be destructive on entry or not with that seam line running from the battery compartment to the button i think i'm gonna have to separate that oh that's a shame i've cracked the plastic right at the top which makes me think that tiny little pin just there actually goes all the way through and i probably should have tried to drive that out first maybe i still will that pin starting to come out before i completely destroyed it there you go that pin holding that hole in I'm going to take some inspiration from what I've just done and try and drive this pin out as well. It's kind of a different scale to what I'm used to working at. Just to give you an idea of scale, those are millimetres on my tape measure. So those pins are one, two, three, four, five, six millimetres long and quarter of a millimetre in diameter. Oh, okay. On the back of the wire that runs to the earpiece, there is this little three prong connector. So it's not actually rigidly fixed to the PCB. It's just a little rubber grommet and those three contacts. That makes sense because I certainly couldn't solder that small. Okay, so with all that out, we can now see the electronics or lack thereof. Tiny little ribbon cable there. At the front, this assembly, sorry, let me use a pin to point with. So this assembly at the front is actually the microphone and underneath here is the uh, connection for the speaker so you can see this ribbon connector and a couple of pins over here and that's the tactile switch that was the button Let's see if i can actuate that <laughs> you see the surface mount soldering 
underneath, I don't think we have much more to show. Well, this one, 2707-3546-14C0543. So the hearing aids are considered a medical device. So they do have to be very carefully restricted, tested and made sure they're safe. So we can see some surface mount components right in the assembly just down in there. So I'm wondering if this still splits in half. Looks like it might. Yes, there is actually a screw in it. <laughs> Let's find out how big that screw is, shall we? Okay, the entire screw head is just about a millimeter. There it is. The screw actually came out. Right, this is where the, like the battery bay and you've got the push button on the top there, which was the back of the hearing aid. And the battery sort of slotted in from this direction, made contact here and one on top. So what are these three pins here? Is that like a programming header? They're inside the battery bay, but I don't imagine they'd actually be checking for the battery, would they? I mean, no, because the battery compartment's got positive and negative contact, so there's no reason to pick up an additional negative anywhere. A little bit of Celastic as well. 34Y1F2N41K. So that's that's the first I see on this little daisy chain of increasing complexity chips on this flex ribbon assembly. And these were sort of folded up into a little sandwich and packaged as tightly as they physically could be. And unfortunately, it's also the only one with any markings on it. Well, it's a shame that we can't get more information out of it, but it does show the whole assembly really nicely. So going from one end, tactile switch for the button, IC number one, which has got to be the main controller. IC number two, attached to the flat ribbon assembly. And I, whoops, IC number three, the only one with a name on it. And coming off of this side, it sort of goes off to the microphone and the speaker outlets. On the reverse, you can really clearly see that three pin connector. Then you've got that mystery, got the mystery three pins, which were present in the battery bay. I wonder if they're potentially mimicking that three pin connector to the earpiece. So you've got a way of sort of testing it if one of them doesn't work. And then on the back of that main IC, you've just got a handful of passives on the flex ribbon. And these two Celastic connections were actually connected to the battery bay. So that, in all its glory, is exactly what you get inside a modern headphone. Okay, I don't think I need to give much of an explanation here. The transition from this, at some point in time, to this, is absolutely mind-blowing and the capability of the modern hearing aids is incredible you can stream information directly into them using induction loops but bluetooth as well you can make minor tweaks they've got the ability for digital sound processing to filter out ambient noises that aren't speech they are amazing and the difference they make to somebody's life who has trouble hearing is invaluable truly invaluable Unfortunately, there is a price that comes with this. Modern hearing aids can cost in excess of £3,000 per ear. That's something that somebody relies on for their life and unfortunately they don't last all that long as well. There are certain schemes where you can return recent or more modern hearing aids and get them upgraded, but that costs just to have one of your senses restored to something close to working is incredible. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to focus on this teardown. Adam Savage said it, and I'd like to reiterate it. I would love to see the community come up with an open source solution to hearing loss that isn't gonna cost the average user upwards of 500 pounds per year. Look, I hope you found this an interesting teardown and I hope that you feel as passionately as I do about the cost of the solution and the potential problem that we can solve as a community. If you'd like to get involved or you would like to see one of my fellow Element 14 Presents team take on the challenge, why not head over to the Element 14 community and let us know at element14.com. Let's save somebody a lot of money and get some real enjoyment out of their life. Thank you for watching. I'll see you over there. Thank you.